Hello, people of the internet! I'm still working away on some new videos, but I'd like to take the time to recognize two video game anniversaries happening this week. The 10th anniversary of the original Xbox and Nintendo's GameCube. Before I begin, let me say that this was the only generation of consoles in which I had all of the leading products. Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube so I have no bias towards or against any of these consoles. Generally, I would prepare a script for a video like this, but that would mean that I would probably miss this anniversary and delay my other videos even longer. This is, for the most part, off the cuff, only going off of a few notes I just jotted down right now and working off of memories and personal reflections. The Xbox and GameCube are unique competitors because they are they were the first high-profile consoles to release so close to each other. Their releases were only three days apart. Let's start with the Xbox since that came out first. The Microsoft Xbox released November 15, 2001. This was Microsoft's first home console. I remember when I first went into my local software, etc., and saw an Xbox in, display, in the display stand. It looks so much different from anything else I'd ever seen. It looks so, well, alien. There was a lot of talk in the town that it wouldn't succeed, and it would just fade into obscurity like the Panasonic 3DO, Philips CDI, Atari Jaguar, among many others. Of course the Xbox was a success, and it took Sega's place in the Council War right after Sega said that they would exit the race and only create software for other consoles. But the Xbox wasn't devoid of any innovation. It brought a few big features that would impact the industry. Most of all would be their built-in hard drive. With this hard drive, they could now save games without the need for a memory card, and also built on Sega Dreamcast online offerings with a new subscription-based internet feature called Xbox Live. Xbox was also considered to have the best graphics out of all those consoles, and it was apparent. I mean, there were some games that just looked better on Xbox and other games. I remember when I first played, um, I don't know what it's called now, Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb. That was just amazing for... The graphics just blew me away on that game. It just looks much better than, than GameCube or PlayStation 2 or Dreamcast. The hard drive and the online services would go on to directly influence Sony and Nintendo. Sony used a hard drive for their PlayStation 2 as, a, as an add-on later on, and then they would have a built-in hard drive for the PlayStation 3, and Nintendo would use Internet functions for the Wii and their DS and 3DS systems. Microsoft's marketing would focus strictly on the hardware features to sell their products instead of the games. Well, at first anyways. But when it comes to gaming, it all comes down to games. The most notable game that was available on day one was Halo. Everybody who I, who I knew in middle school and high school was playing Halo if they got an Xbox. Some of the other notable games that released on the Xbox include Halo 2, Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2, Fable, Jade Empire, and the Splinter Cell Trilogy, among many others. Now let's move on to Nintendo's GameCube, which released three days later on November 18th, 2001. The GameCube was Nintendo's fourth home console. I remember there was a lot of hype for the console, and the graphics at the time blew me away. It was all, I was also amazed at how small the console itself was. You could have fit almost four GameCubes into one Xbox. Nintendo brought some innovations to the industry as well, but they were much more subtle than what the other consoles had brought. For one, Nintendo used pressure-sensitive shoulder buttons. If you press the L and R buttons lightly, you would perform a different action than if you applied a hard press to one of those buttons. The GameCube also had integrated connectivity with its own handheld system, the Game Boy Advance. This would open the doors to possibilities of expansion packs for games such as Animal Crossing, 
are simply being used as another controller with a screen in it, as seen in Final Fantasy, the Crystal Chronicles, and for that matter also The Legend of Zelda, Four Swords. The pressure-sensitive shoulder buttons would influence Sony and Microsoft, and the connectivity with the Game Boy Advance would later evolve into the concept for Nintendo's upcoming Wii U console. With the exception of the Virtual Boy, the GameCube was Nintendo's least successful console. Nintendo tried at least two times before to make a CD-based console, but its deals with the outside developers, well, just didn't work out. Finally moving away from the cartridge format, Nintendo created their own proprietary disc. And I have one of those right here. Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. This is the size of a GameCube disc. This is another thing that just amazed me about how small these things were. <laughs> it always... Just, yeah, every, you compare this to this, the an Xbox game. The size is, well, night and day. Although it was extremely small, it held 1.5 gigabytes of data. It was an improvement over the Sega Dreamcast 1 gigabyte disc, but it was still a far cry away from the 4.7 DVD standard that Sony and Microsoft used. The reason Nintendo chose to go with these discs was to prevent people from pirating their software. If a disc wasn't standard, then it wouldn't be as easy to copy. This was a double-edged sword for Nintendo, though, as by using the special format, they forfeited the option to play DVD movies and music CDs as well as not being able to fit as much content on a single disc as Sony and Microsoft were able to. It was a big deal that Nintendo could not play DVDs. That, it was something that affected, um, baffled uh, my friends and I and other people I knew at school. It, it was such a an obvious omission because DVDs were just getting up there in popularity in 2001. They were reaching their all-time high at the time. Nintendo also, for the most part, stay away from online features. There might be... I know there's at least one game that has online feature. That would be uh, a version of Fantasy, Fantasy Star, but I'm not sure if there's any more than that or not. A lot of people say that these are the reasons why the GameCube was in third place in the console war. But Nintendo always focused on games, and that didn't change here. The GameCube had titles such as Luigi's Mansion, Super Mario Sunshine, two Zelda games, uh, the, the Wind Waker, as I showed you before, and Twilight Princess, and even more if you count the re-releases of old titles such as Ocarina of Time, uh, Ocarina of Time Mastered Quest, and then the original two Zelda games for the NES and uh, Majora's Mask. Other games included Metroid Prime, Resident Evil 4, along with the remake and the prequel of the original Resident Evil games, and the two Pikmin games, to name a few. Well, I'm happy to have been able to get this done in time for the anniversary. I'm sorry I wasn't able to get as much preparation for this as I usually would for this kind of video, but to get this out this week and get it in time for this anniversary, I had to do something really fast, really quickly, so I just jotted down some notes and did this here. Maybe sometime in the future I will do a follow-up with a bit more preparation and do a little more history in, on some of these games, but for right now, just take this as my tribute to GameCube and Xbox as a look back 10 years later. Thank you.